Welcome everyone. My name is Marquesa Petway and I'm a business reinvention expert out of New York City and a professional speaker, proud CSP. And I'm also the Speaker Magazine columnist for the Speaker Toolkit column. And today I have the privilege of interviewing a fellow speaker who is also a CSP for our feature all about the celebrity path to professional speaking. So let me tell you who we're talking to today. This is former Denbo, Denver Broncos captain and all pro linebacker Carl Melkenberg. So did I torture your name or was that close to it? <laughs> <laughs> Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg, yeah. Just the normal way to pronounce that, Marquess. <laughs> <laughs> well, he rose from being a college walk-on guys and a 12th round draft pick to a pro career that included six pro ball six Pro Bowls and three Super Bowl appearances, considered the NFL's most versatile player. Carl played all seven defensive front positions. Oh my goodness, Bronco coaches wanted him at the point of attack and would move him throughout the game. Um, in 2001, Carl was inducted into the Denver Broncos Ring of Fame and the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. Um, he's been a semifinalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame each of the last three years. And but actually, it's five years now. Five years yeah. now. Wow, wow. Yeah, and plus the two years before those three years, right? <laughs> five years. This is huge. And if you go to his website, you get to see the big statues. And, oh, this is so exciting. I know my daddy is going to be happy with this interview, Carl, I must tell you. <laughs> All right. Although he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> so let's jump into it. Tell us, how did this, this NFL thing come about? I mean, were you a college student and they just came to watch you and say, we want you? Take us back. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I had the opportunity to, to play um, football all the way from the time I was 10 years old. I always loved it. I uh, figured I'd play it until someone told me to, to go home. And uh, that, that happened when I was 34 years old. <laughs> so it was, uh, it, it was something that I always loved. And, and, and if there's anything I learned from my parents, it was that uh, if, if, if something's a passion for, for you, then you have a great opportunity to be successful at it. Uh, so football was, was a, a huge passion for me all the way through my life. I wasn't the greatest athlete. I was just one of the guys, but I developed uh, ability through the years that, that allowed me to be a, a top player. Wow. Now you, so again, you're in school and you get drafted by the NFL and you go through, tell us just a couple of things that you remember that was so special to you during that time in your life. Well, it was uh, it was an interesting time of my life. A lot, a lot of um, a lot of players who end up playing in the NFL really it was their only option. I, I was a pre med student. My dad's a doctor. Uh, loved what he did, um, and, and I and I wanted to find the same thing uh, for myself. So I was pre med student. Took the MCAT test. Was one of the last picks of the NFL draft. I was uh, twenty guys away from Mister Irrelevant. That's the last guy I picked. Uh, it'll be be coming up here. Uh, in a, in a couple of days, the, the draft starts today. Um, but anyway, back then they didn't have ESPN. They didn't have, they didn't have, uh, any way to follow the, follow the draft. So, uh, I was actually in bed asleep. Uh, and, and they called me, it was, it was midnight, the last day of the draft. I thought that, that they had skipped me, but, uh, the Broncos had drafted me. It was actually, wasn't even the coach who called me. It was, uh, it was Jenny Ann, the secretary <laughs> gave me a call and said, congratulations, you're a Bronco. We'd like you to come out. So I, I flew out and, uh, and things started from there. Wow. So you could have been doctor, but we love better that you're the NFL. That's right, I'm a patient now instead of a doctor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, a lot of professional speakers, emergent speakers, soon-to-be speakers are watching this, and they're thinking, man, I want to I wanna be a professional speaker, but I want to have the biggest impact possible, or I'm already a professional speaker, and I want to grow my impact, which really, to me, defines celebrity. So what would be your tips to them before we sort of segue into your speaking journey? You know, when they say they want some celebrity, not for the fame and fortune so much, 
but for the impact, reaching yeah. more people. Well, yeah, there, there's a, a real advantage to having name recognition. Uh, that's, that's why uh, we're all on uh, social media. That's why um, we do interviews whenever we have opportunities to do interviews. Uh, that's why we niche ourselves in a, in a small, um, narrow niche and, and try to try to find um, find those uh, those people who will who will support what we do and 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 become a celebrity in that in that narrow niche. So so a lot of the things we do as professional speakers are are targeted at developing that name recognition, which is what celebrity is. Wow, wow. So for the average person out there, would that sort of translate into what can you do to get your name out there? You know, Definitely. some pause you can define or just... Yeah, I mean, writing, writing articles for uh, the your niches, uh, uh, magazines, newspapers, uh, make, making sure that you make yourself available. Um, uh, whenever there's a possibility to bump up that that recognition, I, I've I've done radio shows. I had a I had a television show a couple years ago. Uh, a lot of the things that that I target is once again just to keep my name out there. I've I've done uh, TV commercials in in uh, the the Mountain West for years. Uh, once again, I've been retired for 20 years. That name recognition will start to fade if you don't keep your face out there. Oh, that's huge because there, there are also speakers listening to this that have been in the business 15, 20, 30 plus years and they're thinking, how can I stay relevant? And well, you just said something about that. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of work, but, but it's, it's very worthwhile. Um, people are much more likely to, uh, to contact you if there's that inkling, oh yeah, I, re I remember him. I, I, uh, you know, saw him on, on the news or heard him on the radio or, or uh, you know, he spoke at a, an association convention a, a few years back and, and, and did a great job. I'm sure he'll do a great job for my company. Uh, when, when, when the business is going, going right, um, every speech should give you opportunities for more and more spinoffs. And when I look at, at, at my pattern of speaking in that, and I'm not narrow, a narrow niched guy at this point, um, my pattern of speaking, I'll have geographical clusters. That means I go speak in North Dakota. They hear about me in North Dakota and I keep getting calls from North Dakota. So there's, there's a cluster of, of speeches in North Dakota. And then also there's, uh, there's industry clusters, meaning, uh, you know, I'll, I'll speak for the uh, Travel Insurance uh, uh, Association. I just, just did that last week. Well, that came because I spoke at a couple of duff, different uh, insurance association uh, and, and now all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting into airline uh, situ situations where I'm getting contacted by airline groups. Oh, because awesome. I spoke of the travel, so so it becomes a chain, and and, and if you do it do it right, you, you develop those contacts at the meetings. Uh, you don't just come in and, and give your speech and leave. You, you you take some time when you're there, and you make sure you meet people and and you treat them right, and 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 and, and all of a sudden you're front of mind when they have their meetings. Oh, this is so good. Uh, you and I spent some time with a lot of other speakers in Colorado Springs recently for the CSP Summit, which is for the most elite speakers in the world. And I remember you breaking down some of your strategies uh, for being such a successful keynoter. And so you just gave us some wonderful pieces which is do not just speak and leave, but network, get those connections, follow up. Anything else you want to add to that for all the either aspiring keynoters out there or maybe keynoters that are thinking, I need more gigs on my calendar? Well, uh, the first thing is it doesn't matter when you show up, who you contact, who you talk to. If you're not really good when you're on the platform, they're not going to call you back. Uh, and, and that, that is, is something that I've learned, uh, those techniques and abilities to be good at it. I've learned not only through just doing it, but also, um, from, from NSA, I, I started attending meetings 10 years ago. Uh, I'm a, I'm an active member of our local chapter. Uh, I've, I've, I've gone to all the conventions since I joined, uh, and, and just seeing how other speakers do it, uh, and, and, and then working on a thing or two that, that you learn at the convention every year makes makes a huge difference. Uh, and, and, and that 
uh, National Speakers Association has has been a huge part of my my growth as a speaker. Leverage the heck out of NSA, become a member, and show up. Now, let's go back to your journey, specifically, Carl. You went from NFL player, and you reinvented yourself into a professional speaker. Can you tell us what led to that? How did that come about? You know, Marquesa, I'm... I'm a performer. Uh, that's what I did in the NFL. Uh, and, and you'd be surprised how similar uh, speaking business is to, to the NFL. Uh, you game plan depending on the group you're speaking to, make some adjustments to your speech, uh, tailor it. Uh, you, you perform at a high level for a short period of time. Uh, afterwards, you, you review what you did. Uh, early on in my career, I, I uh, taped every single, every single speech and went over it. Uh, anytime I can get it videoed, I want to look at it, review it, just like I looked at film when I was playing football. Uh, and, and then I go on to the next one and, and it's, it's exactly like football, except I don't sweat. I don't, I don't have to get hurt. It's, it's, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's my new passion. Uh, so, so it's something that, that I can get the, well, the adrenaline is the thing I miss most from football. Uh, and you get up in front of a big group to speak and, and try to remember what you meant to say, and you'll get that <laughs> adrenaline for sure. So maybe you sweat a little bit after all. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Depends on uh, how they set the temperature in the room, I guess. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And and you know what? You also stay relevant, and you get to share you know, all these stories while sharing lessons and leaving takeaways that folks ask you about the most related to your career, right? Very much so. You know, I, I had the ch a chance. I, I spoke uh, for, for uh, Dr. Pepper and Snapple Group uh, down in Albuquerque uh, last week and uh, went great. Uh, I felt from up on stage, but but really was the indicator was afterwards how many people came up to me and, and brought up points that I used in my speech that they said, you know what, this really talked to me today. I needed to hear this. Uh, you know, I even had a couple people uh, get get a little emotional on, on me about it. And, and, and when you have that, 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 what a wonderful thing to have a job where you can change people's lives. You can, you can affect their business. You can affect their family life. You can, you can affect how they uh, how they respond to community needs. I mean, it, it's a, it's a very special thing to do what we do. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, honored to be a part of national speakers association and, and that all these companies and associations are bringing me in and, and let me talk to their people. Well, I am happy that you are a part of the family and it feels good to see individuals like you out there changing the world. Any final advice for all the lovely readers of Speaker Magazine, you know, there are going to be all types of speakers watching this. Um, for those that also have that dream and that wish and they put all their sweat and hard work into building that speaking platform and impacting the world one speech at a time. Yeah, we'll get out there and speak, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, in schools, whether it's a rotary groups, whether it's Kiwanis, whatever it is, get out there and speak, work, work on the craft. Once you develop the craft, then all the other stuff makes, makes a big difference. But until, until you have that ability to really reach people with your speech, uh, you know, it, it's going to be tough for you. So, so to me, that's the first thing. Uh, that's, that's, you know, uh, in football, we're in the weight room, we're, we're running sprints, we're doing all this, this stuff that just, just to get to the point where we're able to use our skills uh, out on the field. And, and, and then it, then it becomes a artistry, but, but until, until you have that, that base, you're, you're not going to have any success. So you've you got to develop that base. I love that. Develop the base, become good, you know, so that you can get up there and get ass back over and over again. Um, any way that folks can reach out to you or maybe check out your website or just get a little bit of Carl for themselves? Yeah, well, you've got my name spell right, so that's good. <laughs> Carl Mecklenburg. You can misspell it a number of ways and get to my website. So my website's out there, Carl Mecklenburg. Uh, I'm on, I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm out there. So, so, so uh, it's just my name, uh, you know, at Carl Mecklenburg, uh, you know, my, the, the website's the same, the, the email's the same, everything, you know, Carl at Carl Mecklenburg is my email. So contact me any way you like. 
Okay, and he is so approachable, and I'm happy to call him a friend. Thank you so much, Carl. Thanks, and Mark Russell. Bye, guys. And don't forget to read this in Speaker Magazine and tweet out what you learned from Carl. All right.